Welcome everyone. In this video, what we're going to take a look at is being able to consume Suricata output using a graphical environment, a graphical tool called Evebox. Uh, this is a lightweight service that you can install and really, of course, makes it a bit easier to process all of the Suricata data that is being generated. So keep in mind with this setup here, what, we're, what I'm really focused on is, is trying to build something that's lightweight. We're, we're using Suricata in what's called offline mode to process PCAPs. We're not worried about building out a bunch of infrastructure. We don't need an elastic stack. We're not monitoring our network environment in real time. So we're not worried about shipping Suricata data to a SIM or anything like that. We just want things to be really as, as lightweight as possible. Now, to help with that, uh, I've created a script. And of course, this also is dependent upon having Suricata installed. Uh, there's a previous video that covers that. So if you, if you don't have, uh, if, you, if you haven't looked at the script, we'll do that in just a minute. But also, if you don't have Suricata installed, it's probably a good time to just hit pause here, go back and check out that video. Now with this script, you'll see that I actually have made a few modifications to it from uh, that previous video. The, the main thing is to try to make it a little bit easier to use and by doing so, and by adding a, an actual variable for the log location. So right now the default, if you just download this from GitHub, you'll see is slash temp slash Suricata. And Suricata normally logs to var log Suricata. That's the typical location, the default location. And what we're, we're trying to do here is, is really just as a matter of good practice to separate the two. Um, if for some reason we had Suricata running on the system and maybe it was running in service mode, so it was you know, monitoring traffic in real time, it's logging to that location, we likely don't want to dump logs in the same location from a PCAP run. That could corrupt files, that could add data to that, that service instance that we really don't need. So just a good practice to separate the two. You can change that location to any place you want, of course, it's your, your system for analysis, but I like the, the slash temp folder because then every time we restart, it clears that out and we don't get these logs to build up. If I have the PCAP file, it's easy to rerun it and regenerate the data if I need to. A couple of checks happen. So next things, uh, just looks for a single PCAP file. Suricata does support running uh, against or processing all of the PCAPs in a directory. But you know, typically when I'm doing this sort of work, I'm, I'm just looking at one PCAP at a time. So I'm fine with that. Certainly we could make some modifications to the script. It wouldn't be too difficult, but just keep that in mind. Right now it's just looking for a single PCAP file. The next thing is to look for that log location. If it's already there, then it will try to remove previous files. And the reason that I do that is so that we don't get confused with any of the previous data. That way, if you know, we're looking at this PCAP and maybe we ran a PCAP last week, last month, you know, even earlier in the day, the data doesn't combine. So we don't confuse the two. So just keep that in mind. Every time we run this script, it's designed to clear out that previous Suricata data. If the direct, uh, directory doesn't exist, then it just goes ahead and creates it. And then we can move on to running Suricata in offline mode. To get Suricata to run in offline mode, you provide the dash R argument. You can see here dash R dollar one. That dollar one just represents the argument that we're gonna provide when we invoke this bash script. So you'll see that in a minute. The last piece is the dash L, and that argument is to tell Suricata to use a different location for logging. So here we're just using our bash variable. Finally, when this script is done, then it's going to use grep and jq to grep the eve.json file from that log location. So eve.json is the primary output file, it's JSON, and jq can be used to query that and you'll see, we'll run this script and you'll see that what it'll do is really just focus on any alerts that are generated. Now, that can be a good thing, of course. If, if alerts are generated based off of network traffic that we're analyzing, I wanna be aware of those, so I wanna see those. But there's a lot of additional information that Suricata can generate that can help you parse through that traffic and maybe pick up on more contextual or, or behaviors that, you, that helps you understand you know, the malware or, or the network traffic that you're analyzing. Now we'll go ahead and run the script. I have a sample PCAP. You can get PCAPs from you know, just about any, any location. I post them very regularly on my GitHub. I have a malware samples repo, not the most cleverly named, uh, but uh, it's certainly there. Um, of course, places like malware traffic analysis is also a really good place to go and find these PCAPs. If you're investigating anything in your own environment or from your own artifacts, then likely you'll be bringing your own PCAPs. And that's really the point here, is that you can now use these tools, use these capabilities for any analysis that you need. Um, while Suricata is loading, you see it takes a few seconds. Uh, that's normal. Uh, Suricata has to, the engine has to initialize, rules have to be loaded, 
And, and then once all of that is accomplished, it can generate output as you see here. So you can see we got quite a few alerts. Um, and, and while it's great to see these here in the console, it's maybe not the easiest way to spend time investigating, analyzing, and really figuring out what's going on in that PCAP. That's where EVEbox enters into the scenario. As you can see, uh, EVEbox.org, there's a screenshot here of what it looks like. Again, it's a web-based utility. It's very lightweight. And we're going to use it in what's called a one-shot mode. You'll be able to take a look at the documentation. Um, you can point EVEbox to an Elastic instance. You can have it run its own SQLite database. But we really just need to, to tie it to the PCAP that we just analyzed. So I think one-shot mode works really well for that. Now, in order to get started, you can go to Downloads. There'll be instructions here to install uh, EVEbox using um, apt, which uh, since we're on Remnix, uh, it is Debian-based. So this works out really well. I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste these instructions. So the first, let's clear the screen here as well. We'll generate that data again in just a moment. But the first here, at least for me, um, I don't need, I don't have to install any of these package dependencies. Uh, certainly if you were missing those, this would hopefully catch those and avoid any errors here later on. Next thing that we need to do is add the GPG key because we're gonna add this uh, location as a source to our apt installation. So we'll let that run. Hopefully we just get a, hopefully you just get an okay response. And then the next command here will be to, we're gonna add evebox to our sources.list. This allows us, once this is done, uh, to do an update and finally an apt install evebox. Okay, so now we're updating our repositories. Uh, we're telling apt to look for and find, hopefully find evebox. We just added information on how it can do that and then to go ahead and install it. Okay, now to confirm that we have it installed, we can you, uh, invoke the evebox command with a dash H for help. And you can see there's some usage information, some flags, and then what are, what, what are called subcommands. So uh, again, many different ways in which we can deploy this. We can point it to an Elastic server. We can have it run its own lightweight SQLite database. Uh, but we just wanna tie it to that PCAP, right? We're not running Suricata in service mode. We don't have to worry about ongoing data coming into this instance. So what we can do is we can say evebox uh, one shot and where I'm coming up with these commands, let's go to read the docs. So I guess if we uh, go from our downloads page, click on docs, that'll take us to read the docs. We have our, our installation content. We don't really need that anymore. Um, we have the different, sorry, I'm kind of clicking around here. We have the different modes uh, running it as a server and then we have one shot mode. So you can see there's the command. Again, fairly straightforward, uh, evebox one shot, and then we have to point it to the location of our eve.json file. So we saw in the Suri ingest pcap script that is located at temp suricata, and there is that eve.json. Uh, before I run that, just to show you, if you look at the content of that directory, you'll see this is where everything gets logged. So not just the eve.json, that is the most important because that's gonna have all of the data, not only alerts, but all the protocol data, information about TLS certificates, anything that I found inside of that PCAP. But then there's also things like fast.log, stats.log, suricata.log. Uh, if we were gonna do file extraction, you'd actually see some files that were extracted here. So it's important to know and understand all of the information that's output there. And then you know, as you start exploring other capabilities that Suricata provides, you'll, you'll likely find those there. Okay, so we'll go back to our command. Um, again, evebox one shot, and then the loca location of our eve.json. That should open up a browser. Uh, if it's not already open, if it's already open, as you saw here, we just get a new tab. And then the only, uh, really, the next step, you're not seeing any data. We know that alerts were generated. We just saw those on the command line. Um, so where are they? Well, first thing to check is the time filter. Right. So with, with Suricata, what it'll do, and this is this is prevalent across a lot of network, you know, network monitoring tools, is that it looks at the timestamp, it uses the timestamp from that original PCAP. Um, as you can see here under the timestamp column, it was from a few months ago, it it maintains, it preserves that timestamp. So we might have to adjust that time filter. And there are several, you know, relative time ranges that we can use 
the last hour, the last three hours, the last 24 hours. If it's a small enough PCAP, it's just as easy to say all, which is what I selected here. And of course, now you can see that we have our alerts. So that is the main view here. The inbox view is to provide those or present those alerts to you. They're color coded based off of the severity. Keep in mind that the number column represents how many times that that alert was generated. So you're not gonna see those listed out here individually. They're gonna be grouped together so that you can get a sense of, uh, again, you don't kind of get overwhelmed by how many alerts are here. Now you can click into those alerts and you'll have not only information about the alert, so the timestamp, the protocols, the source and destination, the flow, signatures, signature ID, all of that information is presented here, but then also you will, you will see relevant protocol data. So this alert was generated based off of the HTTP protocol, and you'll see relevant HTTP data here. So that can help you, again, to get a better understanding of, of maybe what this alert is, is exactly telling you. Beyond that, you'll have the full JSON output. So Suricata generates event records, event records for protocols, event records for stats, event records for alerts. So all of that information is here. So sometimes you'll find that the UI doesn't present you with everything, only the most important, and you might find additional information down below. If we go back to the home page, uh, again, all of these are just listed out. You can select them. Um, if maybe we were using this in more of, a, of an actual deployed scenario, we might want to archive or escalate. So there's a, a little bit of a workflow capability built into it. We're just looking at this PCAP. So I don't usually find that to be a, a helpful capability when just analyzing these PCAPs using this one-shot mode. There are other areas of EVEBOX that you can explore now. In this video, we won't get too deep into it because the focus here was just on getting you a, a graphical manager to investigate those alerts. Uh, but we have uh, some stats here that you can look at. Probably the more important is just to look at the events. Uh, so if we wanted to say, look at just HTTP events, we can select that and now you can see all of the HTTP event records. So these are generated. This is data that's generated regardless of if any alerts were generated. It's always gonna be there if, the, if that underlying protocol is present in the PCAP that you just analyzed. Okay, if we go back to the inbox though, one more thing that I think will be awfully helpful is if you look at that flow ID. So a flow ID is something that Suricata generates. Where I find this to be really helpful versus say just analyzing this traffic in Wireshark is that now this flow, it can tie together all of the events that were on what Suricata considers a flow. So here you can see the, the establishment of the TCP session. We can see all, that there are actually three alerts on this flow. Um, all three of these are related, though, to an, an executable file download. You can also then get the HTTP event as well as the file information event. So Suricata has the ability, really two things that it can do with files on the network. It can provide file identification, which you see in this file info event record, and then it can also do file extraction, which we haven't set Suricata up to do. Right, so now with the flow ID, that really helps us to maybe take a step back from the alert and gain better context, gain a little more perspective as to what we're actually investigating. And building that context when it comes to analyzing these discrete events in our network traffic is very, very important. Okay, so again, um, this isn't going to be an exhaustive exploration of EVEBOX, but I think you'll find that it is a very straightforward and intuitive tool to use. There's really not a whole lot else that it does. Okay, one of the last things that we can do, we'll close that tab. Uh, give that a second. I think it will go ahead and terminate itself. If not, you know, I'm just going to force it and hit Control C. Okay, so it looks like it was set up to handle that event. Um, we will go back to our ingest script. And now what we can do is we can just update this add a new line and say evebox one shot uh, log location. So we'll use that variable and then tell it eve.json. So uh, hopefully now this will just fire off an instance of evebox in one shot mode once we've, once it's processed the PCAP. So again, just trying to make things a little bit more streamlined, one less command that you have to manually enter in. Okay, and there we go. We saw that it just finished processing the PCAP, and here's our instance of EVEBOX. So now all we should have to do is adjust our time filter, 
and there's our alerts. So remember that script went ahead, it cleared out the previous log location. So all of the data from eve.json was just removed, generated that all anew, even though it's the same data, and uh, then launched evebox for us. So makes it very easy to do. So this is evebox, again, lightweight web-based interface for working with Suricata data. It has other modes of operation. You can read about that here in the, the read the docs, and you can get to that by simply going to evebox.org to get the downloads and then jump over to that read the docs information. Uh, but again, this is, uh, this is now gonna help in allowing you to really investigate this data, I, I think in a more fluid, a more intuitive manner. All of the data exists in the JSON, right? And so we could certainly hunt through that data using command line utilities like grep, like JQ, but this makes it, I think, a, ho a whole lot easier. Okay, that's it. So now you understand how to, uh, the role that Evebox plays, how to get it up and running using one-shot mode to help analyze those PCAPs. So happy hunting, and I'll talk to you all soon.